you have a shower in your mouth, please? There are increasing indications that Planet X, also known as Nibiru, is moving in a precise direction towards planet Earth. So what does this suggest for those of us who dwell on this planet? Is there actually a biblical link that correlates with the end times as we know it? Many of you believe that NASA and other government bodies, such as the Pentagon and the CIA, are aware of its approach. Your belief carries considerable weight, considering the recent publication of scientific studies claiming that there is proof of an unnamed mysterious planet lurking beyond Pluto. The claim was determined by observations of gravitational influences on a group of celestial bodies called the extreme trans-Neptunian objects which are orbiting our Sun beyond Neptune. The approach of the mysterious planet Nibiru is at present sending waves of charged plasmatic energy particles through our solar system. The flow of energy will finally affect the core flows of the Earth and result in catastrophic changes in Earth's climate, which is without a doubt occurring on an escalated scale. Planet Earth has been feeling the effects of this inbound planet or system of planets since 1996, with records showing a troublesome increase in seismic and volcanic activity, extreme weather patterns, and catastrophic disasters. U.S. and Russian governments are aware of its approach, as is the Vatican hierarchy, which is keeping a watchful eye on the heavens with their sophisticated telescope perched high in the mountains of Arizona. In the meantime, the public is being kept in the dark regarding this approaching apocalypse. The consensus by many is that such an event would annihilate two-thirds of the world's population while two-thirds of those who survive the initial impact will perish over time due to starvation and exposure to the elements. The question that persists with respect to Planet X is whether this mysterious planet that scientists now claim exists beyond Pluto is the same planet that is believed to have wiped out much of humanity thousands of years ago. 
There is, however, more to the story than what meets the eye. Based on the research study known as Extreme Trans-Neptunian Objects and the Kazai Mechanism, signaling the uh, presence of trans-Plutonian planets, posted in 2014 in the journal Monthly Notices of the Royal Astronomical Society Letters, there are at least two planets, part of our solar system, larger than Earth, lurking out there beyond Pluto, and whose existence can be noticed through their gravitational influences. So it is fair to say that NASA understands that these planetary objects are a serious threat to our civilization. It is widely perceived that researchers had proposed that the so-called Planet X was at least 10 times as large as Earth and was most likely situated at a distance of 250 astronomical units from our Sun with an orbit of 10 to 20,000 years. There is an understanding that an approaching large body or a star system of planets and moons can trigger considerable differences in magnetic activity and recent data from our magnetosphere indicates that this is what is now taking place. There were even suggestions that Google Sky had revealed an area in space that had been censored by NASA, showing the wing globe moving through our solar system. So are these subtle warnings an earnest attempt to inform us that an apocalyptic situation is at hand? which is coming from out of this world, something previously unknown to humanity, but which have memories in our subconscious from past lives and records kept over the ages? If we consider the ancient era of Atlantis and Lemuria and what happened to these civilizations, is it any wonder that NASA would redact the location of this incoming body on Google Sky or in their own imagery? Every week, NASA appears to have learned something new that was unimaginable, and yet they want us to imagine that Planet X Nibiru is unreal. As you can envision, the gravitational consequences of a sizable planet moving close to the inner solar system would spell huge problems for planet Earth. Not only are we witnessing climate extremes and a shifting of the Earth, but we are now bearing witness to the very real observations that the four seasons, as we have known them, are now blending. So with all of this in mind, we can now ascertain why certain governments are taking steps to protect their own interests as they prepare for the arrival and the aftermath of this large planetary body or system of planets moving through our solar system. Here is some news that has been widely reported but which some of you may not be aware of. Russia recently completed building or updating some 5,000 shelters in Moscow. They actually have been quite open about what they are doing but they haven't specifically stated the actual reason for constructing or updating these shelters. But we do know that they have some facilities that can accommodate up to 100,000 people. The United States is estimated to have over 150 deep underground military bases. Coincidentally, a huge military underground city exists below the Denver airport. Now, these are entire underground cities that have been under construction since the 1980s. But this is a need-to-know classification that is underway and is never published in advance for fear of destabilizing the economy. If you do any research of this topic, you are bound to run into various forms of disinformation. Now, some of it intentional but much of it produced by uneducated individuals within the public. Until the discovery of Planet X, 
Astronomers had regarded the writings of the ancient Sumerians about this object as legend. When Planet X was discovered in 1983, they suddenly learned that the Sumerians were not the primitive people they had been made out to be by intellectuals of today. Have you ever wondered what the real purpose of the Hubble Space Telescope was intended for? It was not to explore the universe and the solar system, as some have suggested. Rather, the reason for constructing this multi-billion dollar telescope and then placing it in orbit was for the purpose of observing the inbound Planet X. A June 6th interview with a Hubble insider states this fact as to the Hubble's purpose. He watched this mysterious body through the Hubble telescope and stated that this thing looked as if it was nearby and the Hubble got cut off and they encrypted it and that was the end of any transmission. So let's listen to this interview. Back in the 1950s, most people aren't aware of it, but there was a scientific storm in America all through the late 50s about this thing out there in space because the astronomers were all watching it, and that was back when they weren't afraid to talk about it. It was in the science magazines. I mean, I had a subscription to, like, Popular Science and Health. It was on the front cover of the magazine one day in, like, 1961. And uh, I was really excited when I saw it because here's this giant red planet on the horizon uh, of the California coast and a humongous tidal wave coming in towards the coast and having grew up in the mountains of uh, the Sierras and this thing in the magazine it said this tidal wave coming in was going to be at least three miles high and I went and showed it to everybody in the house and they laughed and they said look it says right here there's nothing to worry about it won't be here for another 50 years. Hey, guess what? That 50 years has came and gone, and uh, this baby's out there in the sky. They've been watching it. I watched it, and I can tell you, this thing has got so much trash coming around it. You know how we live in a solar system? We've got nine planets and a big sun. This right. thing has got seven planets and its own sun. The years as it went by and we watched it, it got bigger and bigger and bigger. And then finally, about 08, we could see this thing like it was across the street. And we could see that it was a blazing hot ball of fire, giving out sparkles of red iron oxide dust for thousands of miles in every direction. And you could see the planets circulating it. Now, I'll tell you one thing that I really am nervous about. I think this thing's got a planet like ours circling it. This is its own solar system. We're about to have a solar system come through the middle of our solar system. This can't be good. But unfortunately, it looks as though that's what's going to happen. We were looking at asteroids right close to this thing. There's asteroids that are floating around right near the, uh, that are orbiting the, uh, the main sun itself. These things appear to be about 500 miles across. This thing looks like a giant red teardrop shaped dust cloud and you can see once if you if you're able to see it up close like we did you can see every speck out there now these CIA people that I know say that we're not going to uh, uh, be that close to it when it goes past us they're saying that in order to attain breakaway speed when it comes up around the back side of the Sun its speed will at least double possibly more which will put it here earlier than everybody is saying it will, and uh, that this thing will probably be about 20, mi 20 million miles from us when, when it crosses in front of us. And then as soon as it flips us upside down, we're going to go into its debris field. These CIA guys told me that this pole shift will probably happen from start to finish in around 28 minutes. That doesn't give you a lot of warning. When you see that thing out there in the sky, you're going to have to run as fast as you can to your underground facility because this is going to happen so fast. Now, see, here's another thing nobody's talking about. You've got this giant iron planet that they say is 47,000 miles across, getting ready to come up past us. And when well, it starts if, to approach us, is, it's going to start and have real serious effects. So is it a and planet or a failed star? 
It's not a failed start. It, it, you know, I saw this thing up close. It did not look like a failed start. It looked just like our son. Right. Okay. The, would you call our son a failed star? No. Okay. Well, you had said planet. I wasn't sure if it was like a, a failed star brown dwarf or a full sun. So it's a full sun? It's a, it, it looks to me like a miniature sun, just like the one we have. The only difference is, see, is our sun is uh, giving off flames and stuff. And this one's doing the same thing as it, but it's giving off this red iron oxide cloud of dust around it. And until it got close, we couldn't even tell what was in there. We knew we could see it was hot, and it looked like it was just a dull red when we were first able to discern it through the red cloud. But as it approached, it started to become more apparent that this thing is just orange hot. Right. And uh, it's got this enormous, and I mean enormous, uh, at least 50 or 100,000 miles on each side of it, this red dust cloud that goes all the way around it. I know when we were watching it, as it started to make the upward swing to approach behind our sun, it was amazing. The red dust cloud settled down. Instead of being around, it started to settle down into a V like wings, upside down wings. Right. And I thought, boy, I wonder if that's where the ancient Sumerians got the idea this thing had wings. Because, you know, centrifugal force is a funny thing. When it yeah. comes back up around the planet, when we see it in the sky, my guess is it's going to look like it's got wings because centrifugal force is going to be pulling the uh, red iron oxide dust and particles uh, uh, out to one side. This thing's going to look like a big red dragon, exactly like all the ancient Sumerians and the Chinese and all the rest of them that had documented this thing's passing before. Uh, it didn't look like a white ball or a snow cloud or nothing. It looked like a big red iron oxide dust cloud with a superheated star in the middle of it. And I mean, you know, and that's what we've seen. Uh, so, you know, I don't care what anybody else says. There's a possibility. There's more than one thing out there. You know, I watched it through the Hubble Space Telescope. And when this thing looked like it was uh, across the street, uh, the Hubble got cut off and they encrypted it. And that was the end of any transmissions we had to watch. And, uh, and we know that the Hubble, in order to be in the shadow of the Earth, had to be at an angle, and so that meant it was looking downward, uh, right. and this thing was coming up underneath of us, and uh, uh, I tell you the honest God truth, I personally think this thing is real close to us right now, but, you know, that's just my general feeling that, uh, you know, and I'm a pretty psychic guy, uh, I have the feeling that this thing is right close by and that we're going to see it any time, okay, because, listen, they've known about this thing forever. And I mean, they've known about it forever. I mean, if, if I read about it in a science magazine in 1961, that tells you that, I mean, it's only 1,800 years away. How could they not be able to see it when it came around the backside of the last sun and headed this way? Right, right. You have to know they've been watching it because if you, you know, Carl Sagan was showing stuff that they took with their old telescopes that was billions and billions of, of miles away. And this thing's only 1,800 years away. Well, and by 1930, it was only 70 years away. You know, we do estimate that this thing, let me give you a thing. Maybe you can figure out your own timeline. We estimated that this thing is traveling around 3,500 miles an hour, okay? Okay. That was our estimate of its speed. Now, it has been picking up speed, and that's the reason why we think it's going to arrive early because... When it comes around the back side of the sun, it's got to double that speed in order to attain breakaway speed to leave the sun and not wind up orbiting it. It's never orbited the sun in the past that we know of, so that means that it's going to have to attain breakaway speed to head back out into space. Now, you look at the NASA videos, photos, and all this other crap those morons put on the Internet. This thing is coming in. It's going to, as soon as it goes around the top of the sun, it's going to go pew back out into space, right. and it's going to do this really fast. When it goes past us, it's going to go past us so fast that we'll almost have no time to get ready. That's my opinion, but, you know, just drawing it out on paper a few times and thinking about it, and I went, you know, if this thing picks up enough speed to make breakaway speed, then that means it's going to come past us. You know, this thing, according to uh, what I was told, is that this thing is approximately 47,000 miles in diameter. Uh, you know, four or five times the size of the Earth, and it'll come past us, and we won't have a lot of warning, and we won't get to see it in the sky until it's on us. Now, 
I was told that the poles are not shifting at 42 miles a year. They're shifting at 42 miles a day. And the reason is is because this planet is rolling over to face this thing. Now, when it goes by, it's not going to push our North Pole away. It's going to grab our Southern Pole with its Northern Pole. And it's going to be like somebody kicked this planet in the ass, that earthquake that it talks about in uh, Revelations uh, when the opening of the sixth seal comes. From what I've been told, that's very accurate because that's exactly what's going to happen. There's going to be a massive earthquake when it locks onto us. As it goes past us, we're going to follow it right upside down. The oceans are just going to be roaring from pole to pole as you could well guess they would, because if you take a planet that's 7,000 miles across and roll it upside down in 30 minutes, you're going to have some real serious problems with wind and water. We should be preparing to expect this thing to show up any time. So this particular insider is stating in the most revealing terms that something ominous is heading our way that NASA has known about for decades. Nibiru, a.k.a. Planet X, and referred to by the Vatican as Wormwood, has a mass that is three to five times the mass of Jupiter. Its composition is cesium, iron oxide, iron, oxygen, and ozone. And according to the interview by the Hubble Insider, it consists of seven planets and moons that orbit it, and innumerable asteroids. Its existence is known by all of the major governments of the world, and they are prepared, as I described earlier in this presentation. The object is very big, and until recently it is a red dwarf star visible only in the infrared spectrum. The agent claims that the government is monitoring the system and that in 2008 it could be seen in high detail with infrared telescopes. But the manner of observation is beginning to change. Using deductive logic, a number of independent videos are capturing its close approach now. We can speculate about its existence and whether the images and videos being published on a regular basis are genuine captures. But it doesn't change the narrative that something big is out there. Even the most reputable scientists are coming to the same conclusion that we have been warning about for many years now. That whatever is out there must be found and determined as to its impact upon the solar system and planet Earth. So it's no longer a question of whether it actually exists but rather its actual location and how long before its absolute impact will be felt on our planet. In closing, I wanted to share with you a few troubling observations that were posted recently on Facebook. The first one is a capture from the Skycam Observatory in Deakin, Australia, showing the Tucson phenomenon. Now, the sun's companion has been visible in this side-by-side -side view on all Skycam for several days now, which indicates that the Nemesis system is rising to the ecliptic, as I mentioned in the video which I published on October the 28th. So something is definitely taking place now, and it behooves us to start paying careful attention to the skies. So if any of our viewers and subscribers have anything uh, of value, any type of information or images you care to share with us, please forward them over here for a review um, as soon as you can. Also mentioned in this video presentation was the indication that this system would be accompanied by a long trail of debris consisting of fairly large sized meteors and asteroids. The number of space objects that are penetrating the Earth's magnetic field has increased substantially in the past couple of years. So take a look at this incredible capture from Japan on October the 31st.
Finally, if this doesn't blow you away, check out this eerie sky captured from Las Palmas, Spain on October the 26th. So as you can see, something definitely is going on that is very difficult to explain. It was in mid-August of this year, as some of you are aware, that myself and my family members and a number of friends were among the many tens of thousands who suffered the worst flooding in recorded history here in southeastern Louisiana. We are still recovering from that devastation. The funny thing about all of this is that it seems that we encounter one extreme weather event after another. Since the Great Flood of 2016, we have had what is now considered to be one of the most severe droughts that this area has encountered in recent times for this time of the year. Not only has our temperatures been steadily above normal, but the rainfall has registered less than one quarter of an inch for the past two months. So I can tell you firsthand from my experiences that things are changing quickly here on earth and in the heavens. And it's important that we stay true to ourselves and help one another as we move through these troubled times. <laughs> 